Добрий день. Добрий день. Мистер Марш. Каче. Добрий день. Right, we brought some flowers. Come on. Hello. Come on. Come on. Так, пойдемо. Хоч на руках перенось, повинні приїжджати. То як тебе звати? А ще один, то що в Києві була з нами. Ти вже так виросла? Не можна пізнати. Не можна пізнати. В вашій хаті. Добрий день. То ви тут мешкаєте. Добрий день вам. Добрий день. То я. Як доїхали? А ви знали, що ми приїдемо, то ви вже всіх накликали. Translate a bit, Igor. It's like a dream. You can tell Katya, I was quite worried. I was quite nervous. I've been feeling quite nervous as well. А Генри Марш каже, що він теж дуже хвилюється. Так що ви в Англії маєте багато друзів. I know it it almost looks like it's too good to be true, but but you spend half an hour with Henry and you even think he's better in real life than he is on camera. Um he just so naturally charming and erudite and funny and self-deprecating. He's he's just total fine. Um and you know he he prepared to be vulnerable the biggest gift of all you know he's not pushing a party line he's not playing surgeon superman no? so yeah I, I know it seems like a scripted event but uh it was a struggle to keep him from not coming out with that stuff it's a struggle to find quiet moments with him i'm not good at confrontation or adversarial filmmaking some people are and films need to be made that show bad people doing bad things um but that's not me and i i'd much rather get close uh and people can understand that we say too close i i don't know what too close is in the end but but perhaps perhaps i could be accused of that um i he doesn't he isn't a saint and i hope but I'm not the one to judge. I don't I hope he doesn't come across that way. Um there's things in if you watch the entire film, I think you'd believe that was the case. Um but in the end, you know, to, to for me the closeness is the reward rather than the opposite. Um we we all can't be that close to some of the people who make films with because we don't have the time to spend with them beforehand. But but the trust and the love that you can try and generate seems to me a better use of our skills um uh, and ethically i feel much more comfortable about that you can get great films in very difficult circumstances because people actually want to and need to go through a very cathartic process with you and they'll tell you things they may not have told anyone else even though they're talking in the end to sort of a public audience um there is a strange need to do that which i myself went through and um that's the basis on which i sort of like to work actually Todo lo que quieras de vida más lo dices, ¿eh? Sí. Que no te frenen. Yo por eso me meto tanto. Sí, no claro. te pueden frenar. Tú puedes irte, chingue su madre. ¿Entiendes? Es tu sí. derecho, además. Sí. ¿Sí? Claro. Bueno. El comandante Saavedra refiere que no recuerda si participa en la detención de usted. Me parece increíble. Usted me parece increíble. Que no se acuerde. Que no se acuerde. Que no se haya enterado de nada. Que no se haya enterado de nada. Y aún así firmó un visto así. bueno. Eso es todo lo que tengo que decir. Y aún así firmó un visto bueno. Que es mentira, él puede decir lo que él quiera. Pues dígaselo a él. Tú puedes decir lo que tú quieras. Tú puedes decir lo que tú quieras. 
Es mentira. Yo estoy aquí. Para decir nuevamente. Para decir nuevamente. Que usted estuvo en mi detención. Que usted estuvo en mi detención. Como ya lo dije antes. Como ya lo dije antes. Y yo le decía a usted. Y yo le decía a usted. Que si me podía informar de qué me estaba acusando. Mientras usted me daba manotazos en el pecho. Mientras usted me daba manotazos en el pecho. Y me decía. Y me decía. No te explico nada, cabrón. No te explico nada, cabrón. Tú ya sabes de qué te estoy hablando. Tú ya sabes de qué te estoy hablando. ¿Dónde están los otros? Que es obvio que está mintiendo el señor. Que es obvio que está Le mintiendo. Le pido que me vea Espérenme, espérenme. Que es obvio que está mintiendo el señor. Véalo, porque el careo es cara a cara. Pero véalo a usted a él. ¿Usted tenía huellas mías? ¿Les pregunta? Sí. Le pregunta. No tengo yo forma de tener huellas de la gente. This is a, a funny cutting situation because I'm the co-director of the film. That he's a lawyer who shot this stuff, um, not as a film. They, 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 they're human rights lawyers. They were going to document the abuse of, of justice in Mexico, uh, but they didn't know. The story ends up being so good that they thought we'd make a film out of this, but they didn't know how to do that. So I got involved through the producer, and we just had this fantastic summer in Mexico cutting the film. So in that case, we're both editors playing with each other's strengths and, and also directors at the same time. Interesting dynamic. You, you wonder how the judge and the policeman are not aware of what's happening with the camera. But that's the level of, uh, the assumed level of safety they feel in a system that's always looked after them. And they, they, they seem quite oblivious to the fact they're being filmed. Um, until, <laughs> and it's in the film, until the cop realizes that he's not totally in control of everything that's going to be said. So he comes into the courtroom and says, I want to make official complaint about being filmed without my consent. And we, we actually included that in the film because it's his way of bullying. It's his, his whole approach, which you'll see, is to bully people. And he brings it up again. He threatens the filmmakers in the film. And the judge says, well, look, everyone's being filmed. This is what the agreement is. You can't say that. <laughs> so we, we, we answer the problem, inverted commas, of our supposed or the lack of consent by framing it in a way that it, it answers itself. Um, in the end, again, as I said, the editing is pretty much everything. Um, difficult material can still really work. Um, and they had a proper cameraman, uh, it wasn't my work, it was Martha's uh, suggestion. They had a, a really great guy called John Grillo, who used to be a, an operator for Michael Mann, who now lives in Mexico. They got access to the prison again for a week and he did all sorts of lovely shots in and around with Tonio and, and stuff. So it's got this, it's got, we used a lot of those pictures to try and rescue some of the other ropey stuff in there. Um, but also it's, it's shot quite closely and it is deliberately claustrophobic on a big screen actually. But it's just, I mean, it's just like compelling. Again, again, you come, you know, there's these things called face-offs where the defendant is, is literally three feet away from the corrupt cop he's put in there. And it's, it's called a face-off in Mexico. Um, but, and it's some bizarre Napoleonic, psychological thing where they thought it would be good to have the defendant uh, cross-examine the accuser. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's for dramatic terms, you could never ask for anything better than that. So of course, you know, one camera here, one camera there. And it just plays out almost in real time, some of these scenes. The editing of material is what completely and utterly transformed that from being something that may never have really been seen outside a small group of people in Mexico to a, a film that's got a world sort of audience and will actually probably change things dramatically inside the very country itself. Just down to storytelling and, and the material, but knowing how to tell it in a dramatic way. Because it's again, it's a hugely dramatic story. There's no, there's no attempt to make something dramatic for not being there. There's no voiceover that says, you know, um, Finley's looking sad, you know? 
We don't need to do that in a film like this because it's incredibly raw and powerful as it is. So, you know, again, when you on the right subject, you, you can downplay. You can actually try and understate the drama, which makes it even more compelling for the audience because you, you're not having to fake it. 